This microscope is shockingly cheap at only $15. That takes some very clever design work and ruthless optimization. And I wanna know how they pulled it up. So let's take a close look inside, avoid some warranties, and figure out how this thing is built. I'm curious how integrated this whole thing is. Did they cobble together a bunch of different system or is this a ground up design? There's a ton of different design blocks that all have to come together. We'll have a camera, a lens, a whole display system in this display, a USB driver, storage media, LED drivers, and there's also a battery on here. Notice no wires, that makes me a little bit nervous. And I really wanna get a good look at the camera sensor. Ooh. So right out of the gate, a pretty big standard battery with some leads coming together into the board. And unless there's another board hidden somewhere, this is all on one system. So right away we know it's a ground up design. Let's unplug the battery before anything too exciting happens. Ooh, and I love this type of connector. You have a ribbon cable and this just flips up, cable pops right out. And now we have our board and we can take a closer look at this thing. So starting from where this battery was connected, I see a B2219D transformer. So essentially this is where our power is coming from if we're running off of battery. There's also this chip in the USB system and both of these feed into our microcontroller here. So I suspect the microcontroller is deciding whether it runs off of battery power or USB power. All the part information is lasered off and they do that so it can't be reverse engineered as easily but it's a pretty good sized one. So I suspect all of the computing information, all of the USB connection to a computer, anything that's using logic is happening on this microcontroller here. That will cost optimize this whole design and keep the design fairly simple. We also have this little micro SD card capacity. So if you wanna take photos, again, all that's handled by the microcontroller, but I do love a good micro SD card slot. The physical design of these are super fun. Let's pop it open and see if we can get a look at it. Yeah, that is very connected. <laughs> so essentially what we have is this little spring-loaded system here. So when the card goes in, there's a mechanical latch that went flying a moment ago that locks in on the little groove on the card. And then when you push it again, it lets the card right back out. And that's how a micro SD card works. We also have a nice little potentiometer wheel here. This is for setting screen brightness. Let's see what's going on under this one. Let's not. <laughs> Instead, let's flip the board over. There's some screws holding this down and I'm curious to see what's going on on the back side. Looks like just two screws holding the board in and one more of these ribbon cable connections. And on the back of the board, I think it's just buttons? Just buttons. We have our up button, our menu button, our okay button, our pow button, and our domin button. So a little typo on the board, but what is an M if not an upside down W? We also have some tape on the back of the potentiometer here. That's to keep it from grounding against the back of the LED display. So someone probably had to go in and stick that on there manually. But I haven't found the optical sensor on this board yet. It must be, oh yeah, there's a little board hidden in here. So let's pull this apart and see how the optical system works. And if you think about it, this is really just a webcam system with an interesting optical interface, it has an interesting camera sensor and an interesting lens. So I'm very curious to see how this is implemented and what that lens looks like. So let's get this ribbon cable out. Oh, I tried to get the ribbon cable out of the way and the whole board came out. We have some cables going to the LED board on the front of the microscope. So we can disconnect those for now. And there's a super fun little hole in the board here for this connector. It goes in and out of there perfectly. So you know that this board was designed specifically to be used with this LED connection and LED board. So there's not a lot of fancy design happening on this board, but we can tell it's from a different manufacturing facility and potentially different designers just because they use different silk screens, different board thicknesses. And it makes sense that you'd use a designer or design group that knows how to do optical sensors. There it is, look at that. I'm curious if we can pull it off the board a little bit and see the back. Sometimes these are very tricky to get off. Oh, broke the glass. So we broke the cover a little bit. There's usually some sort of optical medium on the front to protect the sensor. Let's get a look at this lens system. It seems very nicely enclosed. We have an LED board on the front, which I think 
just pops right out. Look at that. I think the only way into this is through the back. There's no hole on top here to get this out. It all looks pretty press fit. Hey, there we go. Here comes, oh, it is so gross inside. This is just a mechanical cartridge slider. It's on a screw system that pushes this part in and out. And that's why you see all the grease so that it slides on itself well. It was all enclosed until I picked it apart. So if you don't want to get greasy, don't pull yours apart. And then the lens itself looks to be just this tiny little bit on the inside. So all the magic of this system is this lens into that tiny little camera sensor. So there's a little lens in here, probably not glass, probably plastic, that's gonna focus all the light coming in right on that little optical camera chip. So this is our LED board. It's just eight LEDs. There's no drive circuitry on here. Everything is on our camera sensor board. Man, I wish we had a microscope to get a better look at this microscope. Boom. So here's our chip up close. You can really see where I massacred that sensor trying to get the glass off. Unfortunately, the geometries on this camera sensor are too small to see. Even with this microscope, you probably need a much, much higher grade one for these types of sensors. But this type of sensor is essentially at the heart of every digital camera system out there, including the ones you're watching through right now, your webcam and microscopes. Let's see if we can get the sensor off the board. Normally, you'd want a heat gun or something fancier, but we're just gonna scrape it and see what happens. Oh, I just totally chipped it. Might as well see what the rest of it looks like. So we can see this was a BGA mounted connector. Another piece of evidence saying this board was fabbed differently than this board. BGA processes are a whole nother specialty process. And we can also see the sensor was mounted directly opposite to the connector, which means we can minimize the trace length from the sensor into the board itself. And this display looks pretty new. Here's our part number. Let's look at the front. Oh, oh, Eddie, ah. I love ripping those off of displays. Also on this board, some unpopulated component spots. This was probably in case they needed more filtering in this design. It's pretty common to design in spots for filter capacitors, even if you end up not using them, because then you don't have to go back and redesign your board if there's too much noise there. Let's take a quick look at this battery too. It's got nice mounting. This is just a standard 18650, 2000 milliamp hour battery. These are great energy density if you need battery powered designs. All in all, this is a very elegant and simple design. There's nothing over designed about it, but there's nothing under designed either. It's exactly what it needs to be. And that's how they get it down to $15. It's really quite a feat of engineering. If you're designing and building electronics like this, it's always worth it to go to mauser.com where you'll get authentic components from a reliable source, eliminating the risk in your supply chain. Thanks for avoiding the warranty with me today. I'm Daniel Bogdanoff, and I'll see you next time.